Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about the decision-making spectrum, specifically two elements, two kind of polar opposites on this, um, on this spectrum. The first is the maximizer. Now the maximizer is a, a archetype for a decision-making personality where an individual will go through all options until they can find the best option. So they want to maximize the positive benefit, right? So if you could pick, you know, something from 50 doors, and behind each door is a certain amount of, let's say, of money, we'll say some type of prize, and you could open as many doors as you want, you would open every single door, find the one with the most money, and then pick that door as your, as your prize, right? So it makes a lot of sense in certain cases to, to be able to explore the entire problem space and then choose the best option. Now, the opposite of the maximizer is a satisficer. And a satisficer is one who picks the first option, which satisfies the criteria that they're looking for. So for example, if I really need to, you know, get a, like a bus ticket or something like that, and I can go through, you know, opening doors and I find one with, you know, the $3 in it, then I'm like, great, this is enough. I needed a bus ticket. I take this $3. I don't look at any of the do other doors. Maybe one of the other doors has a million dollars. I don't know, but what I needed was a bus ticket. And so I took this $3. That's a very silly kind of example, but in our more real world version, Let's look at it this way. And please, you know, apply this yourself and kind of understand your decision-making personality. Let's say you're trying to buy a car. You go to the shop and you see all these cars and you like, like this and like that and whatever, but you know that you just need a car below this budget with this gas mileage and this color and this style. And once you find that, you find the first one that has that, you buy it, great, job done, get you to point A to point B, it's within your budget, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't, you know, look terrible, whatever. That is a satisficer. A maximizer would say, let me look at the entire industry. Let me find the car that has the lowest price, the best gas mileage, the most aesthetic, you know, aesthetically pleasing thing to me and all the features that I want. And only then, once I've explored the space enough, I will make that choice. That is a maximizer. So in general, satisficers can make decisions much more quickly and maximizers can make decisions that have higher gains, better decisions, right? And people in real life never, you know, are on these extremes, but this is a way of defining the spectrum. So think about kind of where you are in this. Would you buy the first, you know, would you take the first apartment that, that you saw that hit your criteria, or would you look at all, all the apartments that you could? Um, personally, I have spent most of my life on the maximizer side, um, but I realized that becoming a satisficer and, and allowing myself to be satisfied with certain things is actually a great shortcut to solve simple decisions. Because if you try to get the best outcome for every decision, you're going to spend a ton of time. And that can be hugely costly. Uh, huge, like, you know, it can be beneficial, but it's also often very, very costly. So the idea that I want to get across is that you need to understand the types of decisions that require you to find the best thing and the ones that require you just to get it done. Um, hopefully that kind of like gives you some light about what where you fall in the spectrum, how you can change and understand, you know, what, what's going on between these two. Now I'm going to tack on a little bit of a bonus topic because, you know, I, I know that you're thrilled about decision making as a, a video topic. The, we're going to talk about uh, another, let's say, type of decision. This is not about the person who's making the decision, but more about the decision that needs to be made. So we're going to say that there are two types of decisions, type one, type two, and obviously no one ever remembers that, but we'll say that there are type one reversible decisions, a decision that you make and you can change it right after you make it without having any problems or, you know, at some time frame. And the types of decisions that you can't change, ones that you are locked into, and we'll call it the second type trap door decisions. So we have reversible or type one decisions and trap door decisions. Now, this is um, something popularized by a like Amazon shareholder letter or whatever, but you know, this is not our favorite, so we won't go too deeply into this kind of like source. But the implication is for type one decisions, ones that are reversible, you should be a satisficer. Make that decision quickly and get on with your life. Keep moving, okay? But if you find some new information, if you get additional context, if you realize it's not gonna work, reverse it, change it. There's not that much cost to changing, it, changing a type one decision. So you should make a decision right away and follow that decision through until it becomes the wrong decision, until it becomes clear that it's not right. Then choose another one and keep going because we are in a reversible decision framework. Now the second one, the trap door decisions are things that you cannot take back. They are things that you have invested time in or have kind of, um, fallen through the trapdoor and cannot get back out. There's no ladder out of the trapdoor. That's why it's called the trapdoor, right? You go whoosh, 
and you had to live with that shit. It's like when Harry Potter and friends like went into the, you know, through the trap door and Harry Potter won or whatever, and they land on that like fucking sunflower that will kill you, the devil snare or something like that. Like they couldn't get back out. They were stuck. They went in, you know? So that's the, um, that's these types of decisions. So an example of a decision like this might be, you know, uh, renting an apartment. You sign the lease, it's done, you know? Like, of course you can oftentimes try to reverse trapdoor decisions, but they are extremely difficult to reverse. That is what makes them trapdoor decisions. And if they are easier to reverse than the really type one decision, just go with it, right? So when you are in a trapdoor decision, take your time, understand the market, understand what you're doing, understand the implications of it, actually think about it, put effort into it, be a little bit more of a maximizer. Because in those cases, because the decision is irreversible and important, you need to put effort in, you need to put some planning in there. So those are, Type one and type two decisions, reversible and trapdoor decisions, and where you should land on the satisficer maximizer spectrum to try to take advantage of both of these things. So thank you fam so much for watching that. Hey, YouTube fam, why don't you smash that like button? Okay, all that stuff is very, very stupid, but thank you for, you know, being here and watching these videos with me and I appreciate it um, and take care. Next time we'll be talking about, I don't know. So stay tuned and we'll find out. Thanks, bye.